Hello, my name is Sachin Meyer, and I am a student at Georgetown University studying science, technology, and international affairs at the School of Foreign Service. I am currently serving as a research assistant for Dr. Shinichiro Matsuo, and I focus on Bitcoin, privacy, and cryptography. Along with Dr. Aaron Wright of Yeshiva University, I wrote this paper analyzing FinCEN's proposed regulation relating to Know Your Customer and Anti-Money Laundering Compliance. This past December, FinCEN proposed a new set of rules for crypto asset businesses, which would require extensive reporting on crypto asset transactions between regulated and unregulated institutions or individuals. In this paper, we analyze both the proposal itself and the public response, which is both overwhelming and unprecedented. We also analyze potential legal challenges to the proposal in order to afford a glimpse into the future of cryptocurrency regulation in the United States and abroad. In order to establish a baseline understanding and to set the context for the FinCEN regulation, I would like to begin with a brief introduction into how Bitcoin and other blockchain derivatives work. Understanding this is important to comprehending the efficacy and intent behind FinCEN's new proposal. Bitcoin is to value what the internet was to information. Bitcoin allows the value to flow quickly, borderlessly, and unstoppably, 24-7, 365. Censoring a Bitcoin transaction is even harder than completely removing information from the internet. Furthermore, anyone anywhere can access the Bitcoin network and send and receive payments, just like anyone can send and receive email, SMS, or other types of digital communication. Bitcoin also requires no personally identifying information, only the appropriate digital signatures and public keys required to send transactions. Here, we see a depiction of a Bitcoin transaction really a series of Bitcoin transactions. This graphic comes from the Bitcoin white paper. It shows how a transaction uses only the hash of a previous transaction, along with the owner's signature, to send Bitcoin to a recipient's public key. This recipient can then spend the Bitcoin by likewise adding his signature to the hash of the previous transaction, and so on and so forth. Critically, at no point are real world identities ever exposed to the blockchain. This graphic shows a single coin moving in a linear fashion from owner zero to owner one to owner two to owner three. However, this was a simplification of what Bitcoin was really capable of. It was, after all, the first attempt at explaining the new technology. Bitcoin transactions can be infinitely complex with a single transaction possibly containing dozens of inputs and outputs and paying to and from dozens of different and even mutually unknowing parties. You can see some examples of these transactions on this slide. The result, as Matt Carallo, a Bitcoin core developer and Square Crypto employee, tells us in the paper, is that a single transaction cannot be considered as a discrete payment. Coins, addresses, transactions, and users each have a many-to-many -many relationship. All of these features, which have helped Bitcoin gain adoption over the past 13 years, are in sharp contrast to the strictly regulated traditional financial system. And regulators have struggled for many years on questions of how existing anti-money laundering and know your customer regulations could be applied to Bitcoin and its imitators. Our paper begins with analysis of the FinCEN proposal itself. On December 18th of 2020, at the direction of Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, FinCEN released a proposed rule which applied to the convertible digital currency system, otherwise known as cryptocurrency. The proposed rule is meant to complement existing regulation applicable to banks and money services businesses, MSBs, in the traditional financial system. At the time, Secretary Mnuchin said this rule addresses substantial national security concerns in the CBC market and aims to close the gaps that malign actors seek to exploit in the record-keeping and reporting regime. 
For several years now, regulators have been concerned with the illicit activities Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies enable. The FinCEN proposal cited terrorist financing, sanctions evasions, transnational money laundering, and other dangers as justifications for the new regulation. The, proposed, the proposal introduces two new requirements for all businesses transacting with CVCs. The first implements a reporting requirement for all transactions of CVCs over $10,000, which included at least one unregulated entity, including a so-called hosted wallet or an otherwise covered wallet. This includes any self-custodied wallet. Since cryptocurrency transactions do not inherently have a nationality or a geographical location, all CVC transactions, including an unregulated counterparty, are assumed to be international payments. The second requirement is a data retention requirement, specifying that any transaction greater than $3,000 in value and originating from or terminating at an unhosted or otherwise unregulated wallet must be logged and required must be logged and the required information must be kept by the institution. According to FinCEN, these requirements were enacted because they fit well with the public and transparent nature of the blockchain. As we concluded later in the paper, many industry experts disagreed with this position. An extensive amount of information is required to be reported, including the name and physical address of the sender, the type of asset transacted, the amount of the CVC transacted, and its value at the time of the transaction. In addition, the name and physical address of each and every counterparty is required, even if they are a customer at another institution. The context of this proposal is also important to take note of, as we did in the paper. By law, all new FinCEN regulations are subject to a public comment period for a legal minimum of 15 days after the rule has been posted to the public register. Additionally, the standard practice for new rules has been a minimum of 60 days public comment period, especially for such large and influential rulemaking. In the case of this particular FinCEN proposal, the public comment period was initially set to 12 days. Only after the public outcry did FinCEN grant an extension to the period. Additionally, the comment period began in late December and included Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. This effectively minimized the number of business days during which institutions could examine the proposal, the existing laws, and their own policies, and effectively draft a response. For this reason, institutions such as Coinbase actually for this reason, institutions such as Coinbase actually issued multiple responses. First, a shorter one to ensure that they made it within the unlawfully short initial comment period, and secondly, a longer one once the extension had been granted. One legal expert in the cryptocurrency space, Jake Trevinsky, called the proposal midnight rulemaking, given that the proposal was put forward hastily as Secretary Mnuchin and Donald Trump's reign came to an end in January. Despite the unusually short comment period, FinCEN received over 7,500 public comments from individuals and entities across the world. According to the Department of Treasury, this was one of the most, according to the Department of Treasury, this was the most comments a FinCEN proposal had ever received. And the comments for this proposal constitute nearly 70% of all comments FinCEN has received on rulemakings since 2008. According to our own analysis of the comments, and in line with many other sources, we found that an overwhelming majority of the comments strongly opposed the regulation. We broke down our analysis into three main groups, institutions and industry leaders, developers and experts, and users and other individuals. Each sector's comments displayed themes and patterns, which we analyze in the paper, and which I'll summarize here. Industry leaders and institutions opposed the proposal, though in a more politic fashion than users and individuals. 
as might be expected. River Financial, a well-respected Bitcoin brokerage, along with Square Crypto, Coinbase, Fidelity Assets, and others, all submitted public comments opposing the FinCEN proposal. Some of the main themes from these institutions included a questioning of the efficacy of the new requirements in combating illegal activity. The argument that such strict regulation would push ordinary citizens away from established, safe, and regulated platforms onto more decentralized ones was also a theme. And the argument that regulation and the burden of compliance would hinder innovation and place overwhelming costs on startups and small businesses was also common. River Financial River Financial estimated a 20% increase in payroll costs would be necessary to comply with the regulation. Developers and industry experts and individuals likewise opposed the proposal, but with some variances in their reasoning. While institutions did not, for the most part, mention the privacy rights of users, individuals strongly opposed the proposal in opposition to their loss of privacy. Given that many companies in and outside of the cryptocurrency industry have had their user data compromised, individuals also argued that requiring institutions to collect such intimate details of users' financial transactions would lure attackers and make crypto institutions honeypots for hackers. In this last section of our paper, we analyzed the potential legal challenges that would arise for the proposal. Coin Center, a prominent advocacy, Coin Center, a prominent advocacy organization dedicated to Bitcoin, digital privacy, and cryptography, raised many questions about the legal foundation for FinCEN's actions, claiming that they fundamentally lack the authority to impose the requirements of the proposal. In addition, there were concerns that this rule would conflict with foreign laws concerning data privacy of foreign citizens. While we discussed several possible legal challenges that may arise in the future, including those I've mentioned above, none have been yet formally raised. To conclude our paper, we summarized the strong public opposition to the proposal and noted that while regulators are slowly understanding and applying rules to, to the industry, the developers and innovators of the industry continue to build and are moving faster than regulation will be able to handle. Already, there exist several ways for individuals to transact privately and even anonymously, even if the proposed regulations are implemented.